All right, round number three, we just kind of want to give a huge shout out. This is different than what we normally do. Normally, there's like a story behind it that we want to talk about and things like that. This is not the case here. I just was incredibly impressed whenever I was going through Twitter this weekend and saw this story come up. You were too, right, Kate? Yeah, it was pretty cool. And before we even get into this one single person, um, after two years of basic training, Six women and seven men were chosen from a record-breaking 18,000 applicants. And we're going to talk about one of them in a second. But they come from backgrounds of scientists, engineers, doctors. Um, They're some of the best of the best. And this year was the first year it's ever been half women. And also, they have five people of color. The first Iranian-American astronaut um, who flew combat missions in Afghanistan and holds an engineering degree from MIT. They just have like the most, I think, diverse class that they've ever had. But one of them in particular, I mean, of this group for somebody to stand out, holy shit balls. So, and it's just unbelievable just to get through that. How many, how many applicants did you say there was? 18,000? 18,000. Huh. Yeah. 18,000 to come out and actually go through and graduate is impressive. I'm sure every single one of the astronauts that made it through, they obviously have an incredible resume just to be selected to be an astronaut. But we wanted to talk about one very specifically, and his name is Dr. Johnny Kim. Uh, He was selected by NASA to join the 2017 astronaut candidate class, and he reported for duty in August of 2017, having completed the initial astronaut candidate training and is now eligible for mission assignment. So this is where we kind of get into his resume. And it is, if there was a movie that came about this guy, you would never believe that somebody could do all of this stuff. Right. Here we go. A U.S. Navy SEAL. Well, that's one. He was a Navy SEAL. Kim completed more than 100 combat operations as the recipient of a Silver Star and a Bronze Star with Combat V. Kim was commissioned as a naval officer through an enlisted officer program and earned his degree in mathematics at the University of San Diego. You're like, oh, University of San Diego, good school. But, I mean, that's not crazy impressive. And then he got a doctorate of medicine at Harvard Medical School. Now, we don't do too much straight up just bio stuff, but I I feel like we need to with this fella. He was born and raised in Los Angeles, California to a Korean American immigrants. He enjoys spending his time doing outdoor activities, academic and professional mentoring, strength training and lifelong learning. He holds advanced scuba and you're going to find out in just a second where he got that training for advanced scuba. Kim enlisted in the Navy as a seaman recruit after graduating high school in 2002. That's right. One of the new, newest astronauts is started as an enlisted person. Imagine going to him, Kim walking into a recruiting office in California and him being like, well, what's your goals? Well, I would like to go to Bud's and become a Navy SEAL. And then after that, I'm going to I'm going to commission after getting some really high decorated awards for bravery and valor. Yeah. And then I'm going to go on to graduate college. And then I'm going to go to Harvard Medical to to specialize in emergency medicine, not just regular medicine and emergency medicine, because I'm going to spend a lot of my time on the battlefield helping Navy SEALs while also being a fucking sniper. Let's continue on. Jesus. Boy, am I his... an inadequate piece of shit. <laughs> my goodness. After, com- after completion of his corpsman training, he reported a SEAL training in California. After completing his training at the Naval Special Warfare School, Kim reported to school in Fort Bragg for the Special Operations Combat Medic course. He was assigned to Special Warfare Operator to SEAL Team 3 in Charlie Platoon in San Diego, California, where he obtained various qualifications, including here's, I mean, this guy, military freefall parachutist, combatant diver. That's the one where they have the closed circuit where you're not doing scuba, where you can see the bubbles, like the bubbles go back in, so it's called a rebreather. The Navy Special Warfare Training Reconnaissance Scout and Sniper School and the Advanced Special Operation Techniques. Kim served as a Special Operations Combat Medic like that's not enough doing that with a seal he also had the comma before that because he had the title of sniper navigator Jesus. and port man on more than 100 combat operations spanning two deployments to the middle east including ramadi and at that time when he went ramadi was basically the wild west and Sadr city he was commissioned as a naval officer through the navy's enlisted commissioning program Um, He graduated from the University of San Diego in 2012. Upon graduation, he went to Harvard Medical School in 2016. He began his medical internship with Harvard-affiliated emergency medicine residency. And at the time of his astronaut selection in 2017, he was a resident physician in emergency medicine with Partners Partners Healthcare at Massachusetts General uh, Women's Hospital. And he remains on active duty as a lieutenant. 
If somebody wrote that story to me and emailed me, I was like, that is the biggest stolen valor son yeah. of a bitch I have ever heard. There's no way hey, you would CBT, believe any of that things. CBT, my sister's boyfriend saying <laughs> XYZ, and we'd be like, ah, uh, he's a fucking liar. Something like you'd <laughs> read it in a Tinder him. bio. Kate, is yeah. this guy lying to yeah. me? Dump his ass. He sounds like I a mean, loser. <laughs> imagine you're at a Make bar. Because, you know, like astronauts picture whenever they're walking out to Armageddon and they're wearing their orange flight suits and shit like that. Yeah. Imagine this guy has just like a bomber jacket, but it's an orange one, but it also has a sealed trident with a silver star and a bronze star hanging off. You'd be like, okay, bitch, what the <laughs> fuck are you doing? Yeah, this absolutely. And by the way, do you know what they call? So in this photo, the what's what's seven plus six? Thirteen? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there's 13 of them out of the 18. We're talking 000. about a guy. <laughs> time who's a Navy Seal. What's up, plus six? Um. So anyway, these 13 make it through out of 18,000, and then they make it through this two-year training cycle, and then they get their class photo taken. They're wearing these blue flight jumpsuits. Is like their training. Guess what they call them? Their version of of boots. What? Like a boot astronaut. They call them turtles for some reason. I don't know oh, why. That's adorable. But it says the group known as turtles wore blue flight jumpsuits and took turns approaching the stadium to receive their astronaut pins. Holy shit. To get an astronaut pin. My goodness. I felt good getting my little uh, uh, good conduct ribbon. So <laughs> what can yeah. I say? So my question is, so you SEAL school, Harvard Med, now astronaut school, which is the hardest? Uh, I, I would think like there'd what's, be if this gigantic journey he's on what, which which part did he struggle with the most because they're all super hard any one of them would be most people's single greatest accomplishment he did all three which one did he struggle with the most I don't know we're gonna have to get this dude on the pod I like I don't reach out to a lot of official organization I would like to talk to every single one of those astronauts that just went through because Same. just the big brain that you have to just to have the audacity to think that you could do astronaut training, to me, it, that's one of the most audacious claims that you can have. Like when people go through and they're, they sign up for medical school and they're like, you know what? I want to be a brain surgeon or you know what? I want to be a rocket scientist. The audacity that you have to have to do that is crazy. To do all three of these things is nuts. It is nuts to me. I cannot imagine going through all that. Shout out to Dr. Kim, Lieutenant Kim, whatever you want to call him. Also, promote his ass. He's only an 03? Yeah. My God. Yeah. <laughs> That's, uh, I mean, what energy. My God. I mean, because think he gets still gets paid as an 03. So this dude is doing all this stuff and probably makes 85000 a year. Also, he looks like, <laughs> I'm just going to say, he looks like a fucking model. Like, put this oh, guy yeah. in a dress and he's uniform. Oh, yeah, and he's hot. I mean, Put that, him on a poster, dude. and he will get people to sign I mean, up. that's just Kate, the most imagine, believable thing ever. He's just got alpha written all yeah, over him. Yeah, he is. Total. Okay, imagine total. You're, we go to San Diego or something like that for a little ZBT trip, and you like to hop on Bumble from time to time. Imagine this fella pops up <laughs> on Bumble. I would just swipe him away because I'd be like, uh, too good. Put, file this under too good for me. <laughs> so. if, I had, if I had Bumble, I wouldn't just swipe right, my friends. I would lick right yeah, on I'd this like, bad boy. Nope, he's way too good for me. My goodness. Yeah, yeah it's yeah. crazy. A lot of, uh, a couple of military people, as per usual, there's always military people making through this group. But um, Indian American Raja Shari, an Air Force colonel and aeronautical engineer. Um, Frank Rubio, medical doctor and Black Hawk pilot. So just so many, so many people that are so much smarter and better than me. Wow. Yeah. Good for them. But where's their podcast on the rankings? Yeah, where's your Honestly. podcast, Boots? <laughs> turtles? Where's your podcast, Turtles? <laughs> so. All right, let's talk about some people that we might be able to compete with a little bit more. We're going to do that in round number four. 